Mark, I'm watching you type with interest. I love this topic. It's good to see somebody else interested as well. So we'll definitely try to discuss that a bit. Um, in the meantime, we can go ahead and get started. Um, since it was added first, we have uh, an issue here that we can take a peek at in CDI. So let's just take a look at that really quick while folks are uh, fleshing out the agenda. So um, you guys can all see my screen share, I trust? Yes. Good, yeah. okay. All right, so images that require too much space actually get imported, potentially overwhelming the disk. Okay. That's a little context on that one. Um, we use a QMU image info on uh, specially crafted invalid disk images that return like, you know, my virtual size is a gazillion petabytes or so, or something like that. So it, it should never import. Um, and we run that test inside of a, a PR yeah. limit. So, you know, if it's whatever, using a lot of memory or CPU or whatever, it, it should get rejected after a little bit. But yeah. Uh, for some reason, it's no longer being rejected and actually imported. And it's actually using up the entire disk, so. And it's using up the entire disk because the test bed is HPP, presumably. Because um, uh, it shouldn't happen on like on yes. something with a meter, uh, block device. Yes. Okay. So and it, it should it should reject the image because the, the image is specifically invalid. Uh, I, I think the origin of the images I think came from OpenStack where they do something similar where they check if the image mm -hmm. is valid before they actually do anything with it. Um, mm -hmm. It's basically to prevent a, a denial of service type attack where you you know load up an, an invalid image and it uses all the CPU or memory on the host. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, is that linked to a .raw.xc file? Is that the actual image that's the problem? Uh, oh, I actually didn't even notice it from the header of type XC. I don't think those, uh, yeah, I guess it is. I'll, I'll have a quick look at it, see if I can see what's, what's going on. But I mean, XZ, LZMA encryption does allow you to sort of make these kind of bombs that <coughs> will explode when you uncompress them. I think they're called zip bombs or something. Mm. I don't remember us having those images as an XZ file though. I don't think we supported XZ at the time that we introduced all of this. Mm, okay. So yeah, I I, I know this uh, these images were here, or I think XZ was here quite early. Um, yeah, I don't remember exactly what moment we added the uh, these files. They'll be they get these are actually because obviously this is a cluster URL. So the where are the images actually maintained? Do we have them? We have them in a yeah. Git repo somewhere, right? Yeah, they're in our Git repo. Yes. Okay. Um, and and the, you know, in, in reality, they're very small files. It's just that the metadata on it is, is modified to be enormous. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So it's interesting that it started. Um, it stopped rejecting them at some point, and yeah. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, so the target size looks like it's what four gigs, something like that. Okay. Yeah. The, right, so. That would explain why it's not being rejected because the you know, total size on on these is probably in the 30 gig. Mm -hmm. And as long as it fits within whatever PVC we allocated or is supposed to. Or if it thinks it does. You know. Yeah, right. Okay. So I just want to make sure, uh, just for the purposes of this call, uh, what should we do with the issue right now? Maybe there's nothing uh, to do. I'm not sure if we have someone that's already known to be working it. Uh, I think Alex is looking into it. Uh, 
Okay. I haven't really had too much time to look at it. So. Yep. All right. Sounds good. So I'm I'm seeing at the moment this is new. We kind of discussed it here, so people have context. But there's no uh, nothing really further to do here. No notes. This should be kind of just new and getting looked at. So. Um, that's fine for me on the review. Um, let's take a look at the next item. So yeah, Mark, do you want to uh, to pop in by welcome, by the way? Um, welcome to the SIG storage call. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I, I've met Michael a, a few times before, but uh, and I, I've been a regular on the rig on the other QBERT community calls, but this one's really early, so I apologize not having attended uh, any of the prior uh, uh, issues. I mean, sure. prior prior meetings. But anyway, um, I'm the open source product manager at Kasten, and we've been working, I, although I've only been at the company about seven months, uh, we've been working on KEP 3314. Um, mm -hmm. Put a link in the agenda. I'll put it in chat as well. And that is to add, uh, we're part of the SIG storage and SIG app data protection working group. And KEP 3314 is about adding change block tracking to CSI effectively uh, mm -hmm. through basically a metadata service. Uh, it doesn't, it's, it's purely control plane. It is not a data plane. We're not going to give you the change blocks, but we'll give you the metadata and then it's up to the storage provider to then, you know, um, take that metadata and, and then go retrieve the actual data. The goal here is, uh, and, and forgive me for grandstanding, but, but hopefully I can just finish up the summary. Uh, the goal here is basically to address the use case of people doing persistent volume snapshots through CSI and those being basically atomic huge blobs of the entire volume. Uh, this proposal basically says, if you can give me any two volume snapshots, the metadata service can provide the deltas between that. And therefore we can greatly shrink the, the window uh, needed for offline backups uh, for application consistent snapshots. And our goal basically is to uh, uh, bring this, which everybody has in the bare metal and the VM industry, forward to Kubernetes. Well, cloud mm -hmm. native. Yeah. So that's that's it in a in in a nutshell. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for bringing this topic up. Like it's always been. Uh, I mean, this has been something on the back burner in my mind. Maybe not even the back burner, but. Um, I wonder, do, do you have any uh, uh, insight into kind of where this cap is at in the process? Um, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, I should probably find the design doc because uh, we may not have the most recent version linked in here. Okay. Um, so, so as you can see, this started uh, a bit ago, uh, and we're basically in after three three heats or design attempts. Uh, we're in the third iteration and we got verbal consensus from the working group and that included people from uh, AWS, VMware, Google, uh, and Dell um, on, on, the, on the current design uh, mm -hmm. proceeding to prototype, which we're already in process on. So uh, long story short, it's, it's, gone, it's run the gauntlet three times and now we're at the least bad <laughs> which makes it the best uh, design at this point in time, as far as uh, uh, the consensus of, of people who've been involved so far. That doesn't mean things won't change and it won't get shot down, but but we're in a pretty good state considering where we started from. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, so I think <clears throat> I think um, in order to bring it home, kind of to Cubevert, um, it sounds like you're sort of curious what it would take to benefit from this cap in the kubevert ecosystem if i can precisely. put words into your mouth okay. precisely because because we're also a redhead partner uh my engineering vp showed me some some email thread that that came through to him and i don't know if michael is is aware of this but but mentioned something about kubevert cbt so therefore i'm a little late 
as I mentioned earlier, but I wanted to bring it up here just to, to see if we can align or at least make you aware of any of our work uh, mm -hmm. and, and align it if, 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 if that's possible. I don't know if it is, don't see why it couldn't be. It should be a good topic for discussion regardless. Yeah, absolutely. So what I would say just from like the, my first pass at this, from my understanding is since Kubevert disks are uh, a single disk to a single PVC and backing up virtual machines involves taking um, CSI snapshots, yep. uh, I don't envision there to be actually anything to do for Kubevert. Um, because if we take a regular backup of these PVCs and then really the efficiency is gained by only transferring the changed blocks to the offsite backup storage location, that there's those are just black box uh, objects, those volume snapshots. That should um, be the hope. Yeah, that, that would be the hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this, this is, you know, part of the, I guess, part of the design of everything. We're hoping that we kind of get this one for free. Um, mm hmm. So anyone else have any like thoughts or comments on it? Um, for me, I'm actually wondering um, if we know about which vendors seem to be the most prepared to implement this once it becomes more of a thing. Because it has to have, it, basically it's an optional thing that a vendor oh, yeah, yeah. striver yeah, would, yeah, would implement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're talking about now, you know, when when is the time to finally do the, the SIG storage review and so on. Um, and and I think we're we're pretty close to once we get the prototype going, that'll be probably the final comments of people in the working group. So that might be as soon as you know this month or next. Uh, and that might mean we'll probably miss trying to submit it for an alpha on the next Kubernetes release, but thereafter. Mm -hmm. if, if again, assuming everybody uh we get you know SIG storage and SIG app reviewers to approve it, et cetera, architecture, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So how does this, this is a CSI feature. So how does it impact? Um, you know, I think this is an interesting thing for me. You know, CSI is originally kind of a uh container orchestrator neutral storage interface, but obviously it's driven by the needs of Kubernetes. So is this mm -hmm. really this is a CSI extension? It would have to go. Yeah. into CSI, and then it can be consumed by Kubernetes, just to be a little, I guess, pedantic about the process. E even more to the point, um, CSI storage providers would need to adopt, basically, uh, this architecture, which is, in essence, some sidecars, uh, a, a controller service, etc., right? And, mm -hmm. and, um, and then ultimately add in to their, their CSI functionality of their storage driver effectively a way to to make the API for the data retrieval of the change blocks, which in theory isn't all that hard, but nevertheless is yet another thing to implement. Sure. Yeah, I kind of just assumed that people would, if you had the list of blocks in hand, you would just uh, restore the snapshot to a PVC and then seek around to get what you needed, but there may be a better way to do it, I suppose. Yeah, but that that's one way. Yeah, exactly. So so that's the whole point of, the, of specifying everything in in a cap uh, mm -hmm. prototype. Yep. Awesome. Uh, all right. So the last question that I had on this, and then I hope that maybe others, if they have questions, could ask um, the pro the prototype that you're talking about. I assume this is some sort of CSI driver um, that's implementing it. Do we have a link to that because it is something that um, I actually had put on my team's radar um, to look at essentially implementing this cap uh, in some prototype CSI driver so we could play around with it. But if, if that's already in existence, that would save us a lot of effort. Yeah, it does exist. Uh, it's iterating rapidly right now to catch up with the latest, the latest feedback uh, that we had in, in, in the constant design reviews that we've been prototyping. So yes, I'll, I'll try to, I don't know where that is off the top of my head, so I will go look for it. Okay, cool. Yeah, if you could uh, link it in the uh, on the meeting doc, that would be great. Uh, yeah, just that in the design that. doc, I'll, I'll, or presentation, I'll, I'll find those two things. Cool. <clears throat> Anybody else have any other questions on CBT? Thanks for your time. 
Thanks for bringing it up today. You're welcome. All right, so let's pop back and see, did we have any other topics? So that so far appears to be the last one. Um, does anybody have any other uh, small things, open floor type items that they want to raise? All right, seems like we might have a relatively short agenda then. So if there's no other items, I don't wanna keep you further. So um, just wait here for one more second and uh, and we can call it. All right, thanks everybody for joining. Have a great week and we'll see you at the next one. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.